Hey guys, welcome back to another astrophotography video. And in today's video, I'm gonna be using my largest telescope to get close-ups of the moon. This telescope is very large on my smaller tracker. We're gonna see how my small tracker performs with my larger telescope. And hopefully we get some good shots of the moon. I have all of my stuff ready. I have my Pi going, my camera plugged in. I'm counterbalanced. So now I just have to pull her line when it gets dark and then we should be able to get shooting. Now I'm gonna take about a thousand photos just to capture the moon's details in detail. The sun is setting. Uh, back here and it's causing a beautiful glow on the clouds back here it's gonna be a great night for astrophotography i feel it even though it's a monday i won't be out here long and the sun sets at about 9 p.m it does get dark so let's just hope that the north star comes out before then because by nine i might as well just pack up and go inside all right let's talk gear so what i have for my telescope today is my celestron power seeker 127 eq my Skywatcher Star Adventure 2i, and my Nikon D3400. I have done visual observing with this telescope and this tracker, but I haven't done astrophotography. Now, hopefully with the few pounds that were added with my guide scope, my camera, and my fan, hopefully I can still get good tracking and good shots. Now I'm all counterbalanced, and now I'm just waiting for the North Star to come out which is in about an hour. Since we are in summertime, the sun does set really, really late. So that is a con of summer, shorter nights, longer days, and overall more heat outside. Soon enough, I'm gonna have to find out a way to cool my camera. I've already got my Astroberry cooled, which is great, and my telescope cooled. So the next thing is my camera, and I have no idea how I'm gonna do that. All right, so it is time to rough polar line, and I've done that already. Um, it is clear skies out everywhere, sort of. If you look to the east, it is very cloudy, but south, north, and somewhat south is very clear, and the moon is right above us now, so that gives great seeing. So we're going to slew over there real quick and start capturing some frames of the moon. All right, so. We are pointed at the moon, as you can see. So fan is on full, there's no shaking, so that's good. Um, all we have to do now is just go inside and turn on my Astroberry, and then we'll start taking photos. All right, let's run down the settings here. The shutter speed is 125 and the ISO is 400. All right, so I just got my first photos back and I saw some stretching on the moon and that's not good so after this imaging session i'm going to uh take the mirror off loosen the mirror clips the next night is also clear so all right some really good things have happened as you can see water is starting to form on the outside but on the inside it isn't because of our trusty fan here keeping that dew away fix my spacing problem as you can see if you watched my last video, the spacing was really, really small because I removed that back plate, but I fixed it. So now our spacing is correct and we have good focus. So the next thing to do is to loosen the mirror clips because on the video, I saw that uh, there is some stretching on the corners of the moon. So yeah, everything's perfectly collimated. So it's not that it has to be the mirror clips stretching the mirror. We're going to, uh, loosen those a little bit after today's imaging session and yeah so everything went great everything stayed cool no do and yeah so the next thing that i do got to do is buy fan for my camera now i'm not sure where i'm gonna put it maybe i'll put it under or maybe i'll find a way to make it reach the internal processors now you may be asking what is the point of cooling your camera or your dslr and that is to remove all of that sensor noise when you are imaging for a long time your sensor does heat up because it does take in a lot of protons so it heats up a lot and also cameras are very very compact together so there's no way for the heat to dissipate it all just kind of goes into all of the different components of the camera and it gets really hot in there so most people like to cool their astronomy cameras 
and some of them are dedicated with a fan built in and other people do install fans and that's what i'm gonna do with my camera when i figure out a way to do so now the bottom of my camera is very small as you can see so it is going to take some tricky um, planning and tricky ways to fix the heat but yeah today's imaging session went absolutely amazing it's perfectly clear out and i might switch over to some other targets because arcturus is now rising i'm not sure if you can see it but arcturus is rising and i'm going to take a little video of that and in the meantime i will see you guys tomorrow afternoon when all of my photos are stacked and i have a good output image to show you guys be right back <laughs> All right, so it is two days later and it is finally time to show you guys my final image. It has been cloudy the past two days, so I haven't been able to test out. My mirror straps have been loosened enough. Adding on some spacing and this back fan turned out to be a complete success. I'm very, very glad that uh, I didn't have any vibrations or any focusing problems using my telescope. If you ever want to buy a Celestron Power Seeker 127, go ahead. I like it. I don't know how other people don't, but there are a few little tricky things that you have to do. It's a very, very hands-on telescope, but it makes it fun. So, until next time, clear skies.